Hello, this is Mike Lively, and this is Professional Paper Vision, and we're in Chapter 1, Understanding Flash 3D. And last time we looked at an image carousel. And here's a picture of the carousel in the book, and I want to make a few things clear about the mathematics of the carousel, because we're going to go build an image ball today, and you need to understand a little bit of math. And as I mentioned earlier, the planes are set in a circle, or a carousel, using sines and cosines and we use sines and cosines whenever we want to make circles let me do a little drawing here just right on the right on the text so I have a circle and basically I want to make sure that you understand you have your x-axis here okay that's x and your z-axis here okay and y is up Okay, that's your y-axis right there. So by putting an angle in there and iterating it based upon what we discussed last time, and by iterating through the angle, you're actually setting these planes around the x and z uh, positions. Okay, so that's all, all pretty straight. And the reason I'm making these points is because what you want to do is now go essentially from this 2D layout of planes to a 3D layout of planes, and you're going to do that by using trig in 3D. So here's the image ball that we're going to create in this tutorial. And uh, we're going to pay a little bit of attention to the mathematics so you understand how it's constructed. It's actually fairly easy. In the past example, we created a carousel in two dimensions. And it's like a carousel, but now you have another dimension, so we're going to create an image ball in three dimensions. And so you need a little bit more mathematics to do that with. And let's take a look at some of the math that you'll need. Where you want to go is wolfram.com and just type in for the search in sphere. And when you do that, you'll get all the possible equations for a sphere. There's our sphere and uh, a little write-up on it and then all the possible equations. And you're looking for the equations for theta and phi. So if you take a look at these equations for the sphere, you do still have your cosine and sine and your radius, which they call rho now. But now you have an extra sine and an extra cosine. And another problem that we have right here is that this is x and this is y, and that's for typical math coordinates where z is pointing up. Our z is not pointing up in this case. It's actually in the y position. So you don't want to use those coordinates. You actually want to get rid of this and make that z. And this is your y. Now you also note that there's some changes in signs. For example, uh, z... Uh, going in is positive and y going down is positive but we don't have to worry about the change in the sign here because uh, this is a very symmetric problem so we can't mess this up but as you deal with more complex geometries you want to make sure you get your signs right as well so those are the equations that we're going to use let's take a look at the book real quick we're in chapter one of the book right now and we're looking at the section on image ball and I want to go ahead and point out a few things here are the equations we got from Wolfram. I've done a little bit of work on them, of course. For my theta, I now have a i times p step. And for my phi, I have a j times t step. And we're going to explain what those mean. But you can see, once again, this is producing my x, y, and z. But what that's going to do is the same scenario as we had with the uh, carousel. It's essentially going to place planes all around uh, my image in 3D. But it's not going to align them tangent to the sphere. So I've got to align those tangent to the sphere, and the way I do that is I have two more parameters. They're called plane rotation x and plane rotation y. That's going to rotate and bring these planes in the right position. And we're actually going to explain basically how we come up with this uh, phi tilt and this theta step in a sense to orient our planes uh, to the sphere itself. Now I'd like to make a really good point. There is someone who has already done this work, and this is from www.flashandmath.com. We're going to go to their site real quick, and uh, let's take a look and see what they've done. We're on the Flash and Math site right now, and we're going to take a look at what they've done with the image ball. And these guys are actually colleagues of mine. I've had the opportunity to go to their trainings. Uh, we actually are in education, so we're producing the same type of content. They're primarily Flash programmers, and I do both Flash and Flex, so I actually moved their code into Flex, and I've actually changed this code a little bit as well, so it's not quite the same. But the vectors they created uh, to create this image ball, let me go down to it, are the same vectors we're going to use in our program. And let me just make one important point. Just remember this. Before you start coding on a big project, make sure you go to the web and see what other people have done. Do a search. Look at, get some ideas. Don't just code in a box. Because you can save yourself a lot of time 
And you may find out that the technology that you are using is obsolete, and there may be an easier way to do it. So just one point, always search the web, uh, stay in contact with what people are doing. If you want to write good code, look at good code. So now let's go take a look at the code. We're in uh, Flash CS4, and we're looking at the code for the image ball. Now I'm calling it an image ball because uh, in a further iteration of this, we'll actually put images here instead of these uh, filled-in squares. And uh, it's very, very similar to the carousel. You're going to start off with many of the same import statements. There's my vector. So I'm going to use Keith Peters' sorting algorithm. And then you're going to create a display object, which you're going to actually stuff all your images into. And it's that display object you're going to rotate as opposed to each of the individual panels. But there's something new here, and that new thing are these vectors, this vector mathematics. Now, I've discussed vectors already in the Flash tutorials that I've done earlier for this book. But basically, a vector is a design or mechanism which is like an array, but it runs lighter than an array. So here you define it as a number, and so it throws out everything else that an array could be, and just works with the numbers. And there's some very important numbers here, of course, and here they are right here. We're going to call this J length, and what the heck is that? That's the actual number of elements in a row. So let's take a look at that. So here's my image ball, and you can see one. What does that mean? Well, one, that means that there's going to be one image at the very top. And what's six? Well, there's six images in the next row. And what's ten? Well, there's ten images in the next row. What's twelve? There's twelve images in the next row. What's ten? There, Well, there's ten images in the next row. What's six? Well, there's six images in the next to last row. And what's one? Well, there's one image in the last row. So that's actually the number of images in each row. Now, as your images change in an image ball, you want to add or subtract them, then you'd have to write an algorithm, basically, to change these numbers. Now, we're going to do that in this uh, particular lesson, but just keep this in mind. They'll give you the mechanism to extend it later on. You now have two last vector sets. One is a theta set, and one is a phi tilt. We're going to look at phi tilt first. It's easier to understand. So let's see if we can understand what phi tilt is. Basically, these are the angles from center that your uh, basically your rows occur. And let me see if we can show you that. The first angle is 90 degrees. That's at the very top. So from center, you can see if you draw a center line, that's your phi at the very top. Then the next row, set of row is at 60 degrees right there. There you go. Then the next row is at 30 degrees. And that'll be this row right here. And then the next row is at zero degrees, right here, right here, and then so on. So the next row is at minus 30 degrees, the next row is at minus 60 degrees, and the final row is at minus 90 degrees. And so that's your phi angle right there, and you actually use that to place these rows in the correct position. So now you have your rows placed, you have the right number of images in those rows, and what you have to do next is basically orient them correctly around the sphere. That's where theta comes in. So we're taking a look at the theta step right now. And what you want to do is pretty much orient your uh, angles and theta around the sphere. So if you take a look at one of those right there, they won't be oriented correctly. You've got to get them oriented so they face in, so they're tangent. We'll use these angles to do so. Now, it's not hard to calculate this, but let me just do a little heuristics on this. The first one makes sense, right? Zero degrees at the top. There's no orientation required there, and zero degrees at the bottom. That's pretty easy. What about the second one? We have to do a little bit of mathematics, and let's do some right here. You have 360 degrees, right? And in the next row, how many of these do you have? You have six of them. So what's 360 degrees divided by six? Well, that's equal to, guess what? 60. And that's the orientation that you need for the next two rows. And that would be this row here, right? And this row here. Good. So the next one is 36 and 36 and 30. So does that work out? Let's take a look at that does. So take 360. And how many do you have in this particular one? Well, you have 10, right? Divide that by 10. So what's that angle? 36, right? And that works for the next two rows, right here and right here. So you got your final one has how many in it? It has 12, and if you divide uh, 360 by 12, that's right. That gives you 30, so you're in good shape. That's your final theta angle. And by using these angles, you can align your planes to your sphere.